Hi, this is Bruce Pappas. Uh, the goal tonight is to look at my 2005 um, Lapavone Millennium Pro Professional and do it in kind of a uh, maintenance um, inspection and it hopefully install this new brass sleeve that I have um, and then also this uh, new uh, pressure profiling kit. Uh, currently, I have uh, a Bluetooth professional profiling kit. All these things I'll specify down below in the comments. But um, uh, I'm going to try to I'm going to get rid of that and go back to the gauge itself, and I'm going to be testing out this uh, new brass sleeve. So uh, the first thing I need to do is remove the group. Actually, not remove the group is to remove. Uh, Try to remove the piston and everything here. Maybe I can actually uninstall the uh, piston without going through the whole thing of taking it off of the uh, uh, off the boiler. So first thing. So Gabor gave me all these interesting ways of securing things. So I'm going to take this apart first. Uh, let's see. I think this may be a 13 millimeter. Nope. I'll just try 14. I don't know why I said 13. Uh, 14 millimeter. I'll take this part f loose first. And so I can take the shaft out. So this comes out first. This is the Bluetooth adapter. Uh, I have the battery upstairs. I take it out after each use. And this was the spring to hold it in place. And then, uh, if I recall right, these pins are just uh, screwed in here uh, uh, briefly. So I'm going to turn this off and grab the right adapters to get these. Gabor shipped these little uh, screws here that help you pull out the pins. I think they just pull out and a couple other little parts. I did save them, so thank God. So I think we just screw these in here. So this is to remove the old pins. Yep. That one came out easily. It's got some grease on it, so I'm not going to put it on my nice protective pad here. And this side, I just screw this little screw that he gave you here and pull out the pin. So both of those pins are removed now. And I'm going to take, since I probably will not be reinstalling this, I'm going to take the screw and uh, put it aside. So, now the lever can lift up all the way, and I'm going to try something just to see if it'll work. I've done this before, and without applying a lot of pressure, if I can push the piston down. Now, it moved onto the screen, and I just uh, push down on the um, uh, shaft, and the screen came out. So, here's the, whoops, <laughs> and the piston fell out. So, here's the... Uh, the screen, it really doesn't have a lot of buildup inside. I cleaned it pretty well after each use, but obviously that'll get cleaned. And the piston fell out. And uh, the piston looks like it's in good shape. Um, and I'm going to replace it, obviously, with the other adapter that I have. So those things get set aside. And all that came out really well. So now it's going to be interesting to see if I can get... Uh, the sleeve out of here without uh, taking everything apart. I think I'm going to take the group off just so I can do an inspection inside. Um, just a, another uh, thought here. The only reason why this screen fell off is because I had lubed this gasket here uh, for the uh, portafilter or for the shower screen and the portafilter so that it could um, just slide out easily so that's the only reason really that came out i'm just going to wipe this down and see look at that yep look how that uh the coffee residue just really came out easily with um with a cloth i haven't i haven't cleaned this thing probably for a year so that's really not much build up in a year uh, obviously i want to put it into some kind of uh, uh detergent to uh you know, clean it up all the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is I know that these 14 won't work. I know that's a 12. 
So I'm going to pull off a 12 millimeter. I love these little um, Tecton uh, ratchet um, screws for this. Actually, the 10, the 12 isn't going to work. I believe it's a 10. So I can just put these on and loosen this up easily. Uh, I'm not removing the handle at this point because I don't see any reason to do that. But uh, if I need to, it'll be easy to do. Uh, so loosen those two screws up, two bolts up, uh, unscrew my hand. It's not going to fall down on me because there's a little sleeve that fits inside here. I know that. So um, uh, now I can just slide this off. And let's kind of do a quick inspection. Uh, the gasket looks good still. The plastic, the little plastic sleeve looks good. And the pipe has some buildup on it of minerals, but not much. This is more of the protective coat that goes onto the copper and the brass that le that uh, keeps it from uh, uh, leaching off metals into the water. So that's really a pretty good shape. I can clean that up a little bit probably when I... Uh, put everything back together, but I'm not going to worry about it. For now, I'm going to unscrew this because I tend to take this off every time. This little fit, this little part here where they go together, this threaded part into here is really fragile and you can break this off pretty easy into the plastic part if you're not careful. And I'm going to take off the gasket while I'm at it. So actually things look pretty good in here. There's really not much buildup at all. I would have anticipated more buildup, but I don't see it. Now, so looking inside, this is a brand new sleeve that I put on about, um, probably about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, looking inside, you can kind of see things here. I don't know if you can, uh, with not very good light here. Do I have a flash on here? I don't. Uh, so you can, now I can't see too much in here, but it's really pretty clean. Actually, very clean inside here. There's a little bit of grease built up way at the top where it never gets affected by anything. But otherwise, the sleeve was in really good condition. And uh, I'm going to find my parts now to, that I got from Stefano to take this part off. Usually I have a really good tool for this. I can't find it right now. Uh, I didn't put it back where it belongs. So I'm going to use these Nino Nose uh, uh, vice grips uh, and then the bar that I bought from Stefano. I'm going to place it on top of the uh, sleeve and then I've got this in the vise so it should just turn very easily and it is so I can just turn out the sleeve. This fits, I'll show you where this fits as I uh, when I take out the sleeve here. There's a couple notches on the top of the right, right on sleeve that um, this fits into and so this little bar fits right on top of here so it's easy to get out I've got that in my previous videos the inside of my groove looks really really clean so that's not going to be a problem uh, let's see I do like to clean it up a little bit here there's still I can feel the uh, the uh, silicon grease still on uh, on my sleeve here which is try to get a little bit off so you don't get it all over everything else um, and so what I'm going to do is this an exact replacement right here as a brass version um, and so uh, it should be an exact match and so I'm going to try to install this brass one in terms of this and I'm going to see how that affects things but first I'm going to I need to remove this gasket here this is a brand new gasket I'm just going to use this little pick here um, to get underneath and not do any damage to anything here and remove uh, here we go there we go and remove this so I slipped up underneath here pull it my way a little bit actually just work its way down maybe there we go work my way off so it came out really nice and you can see it's in good shape and my Molotov should be here I do use this for all sorts of stuff uh, my grease uh, here it is I use it I, I'll, I use it on a dishwasher for a part where the rubber 
goes in I, uh, into the water supply. I use it outside so that my faucets don't stick to the, uh, uh, my hoses don't stick to the um, uh, spigots. And so the big thing to do is just to kind of, you know, run this all around, put a little bit of dab, a little dab on it, and um, I'm going to uh, slide it again back over my brass sleeve. This little brass sleeve is here. I just work my way around so that it fits in place. So there you go. So it's all in place now. Uh, it looks pretty good. So the next thing to do is to put a little bit of mollycott here on these uh, threads. Just a, just a small amount so that it's easier to uninstall next time and so that there's no build up underneath there. So a nice little silicon grease all the way around. Clean it off. Okay. Uh, inside my group, it really looks good. So I'm going to use a little paper towel here, do a little cleaning. You can see that's all the stuff I'm getting off of it. So the group is really clean. I do, I have a nice water supply that's filtered. Uh, that's actually it's RO and then it's remineral, remineralized. So the water is really in great shape. And I replace the gasket down inside there for the uh, shaft uh, a while ago. So it's in good shape. So. Oh, I don't have to grease anything else in here except the threads. And so, let's see. Where did my metal piece start go? There it goes. So, let's just get these things started here. So that it goes in well. I had my other tool it's just so much easier than this but this one will work and really all I want to do is to tighten this down hand tight I don't need to honker it down any really any more it goes in a little tighter because it's obviously brass so this really returns the Millennium to the pre millennium millennium where they had a brass sleeve instead of the right on or Teflon as people refer to it sleeve. So there we go. So I got it tight now. It's not going to go anymore. Things look good down there. Uh, so I replaced this sleeve with a brass one. So that's kind of cool. So now that I've got the new brass sleeve in, the next thing is to put this uh, new brass fitting uh, piston with a shaft and a uh, pre pressure profiling kit on top. So I need to um, install this. So I put all these things together earlier just to make sure that everything fit fine. This was n not, uh, this did not come pre-assembled this way from what I remember. But I have put on uh, the, the gaskets properly. They were supplied with the kit. Um, and what I want to do now is to tighten in the shaft. And this, these little two holes go on the top part. And obviously there's a, a hole all the way through the shaft so the air can pass through it. And also a hole in the bottom of the piston here. So where this fitting fits into the brass piston, where the shaft fits into it, you need to put on Teflon tape under there so that doesn't leak. And it makes a nice solid... Uh, fitting so three turns again one two three turns pull it break it off tighten it tighten into the threads make sure you don't have anything sticking up on this top part up here so you can see that's pretty good I may cut this off on the bottom uh, I'm not putting any uh, silicon grease inside here because I want a nice tight fit uh, and I want it so you can see that that is a nice fit this time I tried this I dry fitted it and it was really
kind of loose. And so this will hopefully make it so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, come unscrewed. But I need to get this thing screwed all the way down. And to do that, I'm going to put it into my vise. see me from over there. I think you can still. I don't want to move my camera if I don't have to again. And so let's make this nice and snug. Let's do a nice turn on here so the shaft's not spinning. Okay. A little more snug. There we go. Nice. Nice tight fit. Nice tight fit. Actually, I do have just a small amount of uh, silicon or uh, Teflon tape right at the top. Now see if it's going to come off. It does. Comes off like that. So there it is. There's a shaft that's all ready to go in now. Um, and so the next thing I need to do is to take my group. I uh, I bought some new screws from Tudor also. He, um, these were the old screws that came with it. Uh, you can see I bought not came with it I bought these but the problem of it is is there's really no way to hand tighten there's no screw or slot in them so I bought these from uh, Tudor and they have slots on them so the, the, it's really kind of a cool uh, uh, improvement so uh, if you've watched any of my other videos you know I use spacers at times to make sure that uh, the the uh, handle doesn't rattle, but since I need to put on a new handle, I'm going to have to take this one off, obviously. And then uh, let's see what it, how things go together. So the next thing to do would be to lightly. Uh, I'm just doing this off seat on my pants. I really haven't read any instructions or anything, but uh, I've done this before. So it's the lightly lubricate the inside of the sh of the pist of the uh, new sleeve it's a new brass sleeve uh, okay so it's got a light coat all the way around it and then also I'm going to put a light coat on the gaskets themselves these V gaskets they're right here and I'm just going to put a light coat on them Okay, I always run things around just to level things out and take off any excesses, any excess that may be there. And so I'm ready to stick it into the group. And that's a fairly easy thing to do. You just wiggle that part in. Now, Gabor gives a nice little tool if it's handy here. It is handy. I do have it handy here. That fits over the pistons, over the rings and the, and the piston. And it allows for um, the uh, um, gaskets to go in well. I love this little piece he did. It's really a nice little deal. So I'm going to apply it. Let's see. Let's take this out so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, okay. Actually, I should probably put a little bit of grease on the top gasket too. But see, this little ring fits on he's got a little angle on it on the top a bevel so it fits in and it holds the the gaskets in the right place so that when you push on the piston actually i'd rather do it this way i know so come down from the top there's a little groove on the bottom here a little angle groove let's go from the top down so that it so that we can uh, push those uh, the gaskets in tight so that they don't uh, catch on the group as it goes up. And I forgot to do one other thing. I'm glad I actually took this off. I'm going to lubricate a little bit of the, uh, the shaft here so that it, it passes easily up and down there. And then it gives some lubrication, obviously, to that top uh, uh, o-ring up there so this is really cool so you just stick this in and then because you've got this little black piece here you can just slide 
uh, the piston right up and the O-rings are in perfect shape. This is a great little invention. I don't know why more people don't include it. And then I'm going to turn eventually here. I'm going to turn. Um, so you just heard a noise. And let me get it off the floor. This is my, uh, this is the ball bearing, the uh, sleeve that fits in the back for the piston, for the lever pins. Uh, I don't know if you remember these. I've talked about them before. We've talked about them on the site. These are actually ball bearings in here sealed. So they help the lever uh, to make it run more smoothly. Okay, so now this fits in tight. You can see it. Um, I'm just going to try to turn these two pins. Um, and if I can find the screws that go with it. These are the screws he gives you. Actually, I'm not going to be able to get the screws in. So let's use one of these things to try to turn it. If not, I'll have to take it out and put it in right. Boy, it's a nice tight fit. I actually started turning there a little bit. Let's see if I can... No, I still can't get that in. Um, I'm trying just to turn the shaft. So the, there we go. So the pins, these holes here are facing, obviously it's where usually you put a pin through. And now because there's a hole through the middle of the shaft where the air passes, we have these little pins that just fit in here to hold it in place. And they, and they, the holes on the, on the shaft don't go all the way through. So now that's all lined up. Uh, I've got, we'll deal with this one a little bit later, but that's the piston throw. We usually put it to the bottom of the uh, group. And so next thing's next. Um, I think I'm ready to install the group back on. Okay, so going back on, put the group back on so that I can do everything else. Um, first thing, put a little mollicot on the gasket so that it makes a nice seal and sticks and doesn't move around. Um, take, and I don't use any mollicot on this, um, mollicot on this. Um, I'm not going to actually do anything with this. I like this nice protective coating and this is already screwed in properly, so I don't need to do anything there. So let's just... And we, this is really, you don't want to cross thread this. So you be, be, need to be very careful getting this uh, started. You can see I still don't, I didn't like the way that started. I don't use any kind of grease on this because I don't want it to come loose. Uh, okay, so you kind of got it here. It should turn freely. Uh, bye. I don't like the way that turns. So what's going on here? I think I got it cross-threaded. So let's see how I can fix that. Gosh, and you saw I didn't really do anything to it. So let's just give it a little bit of pressure in here so that it, the threads start perfectly where they should start. There we go. Now you see the difference? I don't know if you notice the difference. It just really spins freely in here. And you got to be careful not to break off these threads, but you want the brass pipe sticking down. So that didn't get cross-threaded. You can see the plastic parts all the way back down on here now. It's tight, or as tight as it's going to get. The fill tube is not moving. And I almost have it where I want it. Uh, uh, let's see. There we go. When I'll get an alignment, go facing down. And so the fill tube's back in. Everything's back. I've got the washers here. And now all I have to do is... Uh, these are new stainless steel bolts that I bought on my... Uh, when I first got my machine, and I love these. Um, they're, um, I got them from Stefano's, and they replaced the little the bolts that were here before that were all rusted, and obviously had been taken apart a number of times, and 
That's in bad shape. So hand screw these on. Let's go back to the 10 millimeter. And what you do is yeah. this can get out of level. And the best thing to do, I have found, is just to kind of push down the top so that it's on the bo both bolts evenly. And so that should do it. You can level it later if you need to. Don't tighten that one. You gotta be really careful with these. If you over tighten them, break them, it's really hard to get out with the easy outs and everything. It's not worth doing it. So just a little snug, hand snug it, hand snug it. Okay, so the grip's back on. Let's see. Um, next thing I want to do, the groups on, is I need to reattach the lever. And we have a new lever, so I'm going to need to take off my old handle. I actually don't have to do this, I can do this part later. But I'm going to take this off right now. You can, I love these, these handles. Uh, I'm going to set this one aside. And so the next thing I need to do is to put this uh, handle base back on here. Before I do that, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take my ball bearing and put a little malacote on it, malacote on it, and stick it back in the slot where it belongs. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some spacers. I'm going to figure out how tight this one actually is. Remember these screw holes on the handle, these holes here on the on the front one go down. That's always the case. People, you know, will do it this way. It's not you don't get enough throw that way. This is where you want the piston throw. So these these front holes go down. And so I've got the new uh, The new pins here, which are actually screws. It's a screw on one end. And I'm not going to put any malacot on the other side because I want it to hold tight. And so I'm going to st stick this one in. I'm just going to see how much play I have. So I have a little bit of play back and forth and on the back side. Uh, there's two ways to handle that. Uh, one way is to... Um, put washers back in here to make it uh, sit tight. And I think I may just try that. I had these uh, stainless steel washers here. I bought a whole set of them. I bought different kinds. These are, I bought a, you know, a whole bag of these. Actually, it was in a bag. And then I have the smaller ones here too. And then I have another version here. Uh, and these are really small. Uh, they actually look like this. If you can see that. So I'm going to use, you can see that that will actually may be too thick back there, but I'm going to see if one of these fits. It won't fit. These are too thick. Let's try the small ones. So we get a small one going here. And then I'm going to get a small one other side. Yeah, the two small ones will actually uh, take up most of that. And I could, I could actually hammer these, the fork together a little bit, but then that would push the screw out on the back side. And he's made them just the right length from one side to the other. So uh, we're going to end up just doing this. We're going to end up doing the two, the two washers. 
and you don't have to do this, um, but I'm going to. Um, what's nice about using a little uh, grease on it is it actually holds it in place. Aha, that's why it didn't work entirely. Because my bearing is just a little shy. So I'm going to use two of the small ones in here. Two to build out the bearing, because the bearing wasn't the exact same size. And then two to build out the fork. One on each side. So I'll need another two small washers like this. And here they are right here. Two small washers. And again, now this is going to be holding the fork out. The other two, if you can see them, you can't see in there. The bearing was just a small, a bit smaller than wasn't as wide as um, the, that slot in there. So two of these will actually, one will bring out the bearing about the, the bearing out to the right slot and the other one will bring out, um, take up the fork space. Uh, okay, so let's try this again. Got the holes going the right way. Slide this in, and if there's just a, I can always add more bearings or more washers if I need to. Didn't take it all up yet, but I'm going to leave it that way for now, and then I'm going to use this slotted screw that he gave me to put the two door gave me to put on the other side here. So I can tighten those down later with screwdrivers. One on each side, just a slotted screwdriver. But it, you can see there's still a little bit of slop here. But that's okay. Now, for the front ones, I am going to use these. I think I end up using... Oh, I can't use these big ones. Actually, I found the other ones, but they're way too big. These are the bigger size ones that, I, that the spacer can fit through. These are the medium size ones, which you can't see through my hand. And then uh, these are the smaller size ones, which is the ones I'm going to end up using again. No, where we go? There we go. Uh, so, uh, so you can see that this is, you know, free floating in here now, and I'm going to try to space it a little bit again. Uh, I'm going to tr well, let's just uh, before we go crazy here, let's uh, let's do a dry run of the uh, pins. So the pins uh, screw in from uh, both sides and they have to go into that those two holes so let's see what that gives us here uh, so that's what moves the piston up and down the shaft so these fit tight here I thought I was going to use some spacers in here I'm not going to I'm actually going to use the two spacers I have. He gives you a couple spacers, but unfortunately, I don't think they're actually stainless steel. I think they're regular, at least the ones that got shipped to me, are, um, are just regular steel, the zinc coated. And I'm going to use stainless steel in here. So, and I'm not going to use any malacot on there, but I will use them on the spacers. And again, these are the little spacers. And he doesn't recommend, th this is not what's recommended, this is just what I do. I'm going to put it over the holes there. Uh, on that side. And then uh, Malakot over here. And put it over the hole there. And the grease does two things. It obviously greases things, but it also holds it in place. Holds the washer in place for when you uh, install the pins. And like I said, I'm not going to use anything on the pins. Actually, I probably use, let's just put a little bit on the head of the pin, but nothing in the screws themselves. Okay, so we've got that going. Let's see if we can get this going in here. We've got obviously this side. That one fits. 
I, but I slid the other one out, so I know that. So I've run into this before. So with this little device, this little tool here, in the offset uh, probe here, you can actually slide those things back in place, and so that the screws. Oh, and let's, we're going to put a little bit just on the head or the tip. Uh, and again, that screws right in. Uh, let's see. Uh, I always like to hand tighten these things because otherwise, let's see, that still hadn't gone in there right, so that's why it wasn't. Let's pull it back out. There we go. I never try to force anything on these because otherwise you strip things and cross thread and do all sorts of stuff. So. There we go. So, still a little bit of wiggle for me. I think I would actually take another one, put another washer back in the back. I'll do that just the same way I've done before, and then I'll show you how. Okay, I was having trouble getting uh, the pins in, and so what I decided to use, I've got a dry pin here. Uh, it's probably, it's a little smaller than the metric that goes in here. But I just pushed this in here, and it, it was hard to go, but I pushed it in. And I spun it around a little bit instead of trying to use what I was trying to use was my just my little uh, probe here, um, and so I tried to use the little spacer, and I've got. So let's just see. If this should actually work, and so there we go. Pushes it nicely. This flushes out on the other side, which is what I wanted to do. And then uh, the screw with the slots on it just fits on the other side here. And uh, so, so what I'm trying to figure out now is that how much slop does this have? And you can see by adding one spacer in the back there, there is no slop at all. And I probably don't even need the spacers here because this does such a nice job. I'm going to leave those in because they don't hurt and they're there. Um, and these things just need to get tightened up. Uh, yeah, he gave us the tooling here. It has a little slot on the inside. I'm going to put that toward the fork itself because then it'll allow me to get a little bit of a uh, let's see what size I think. Get a little bit of uh, this. That was a nine, so nine's not going to work. So let's go back. Obviously, it's a ten, and so the ten will fit right on here. And you can just snug that in a little bit so it doesn't move, which is cool. I like having that. Uh, and then obviously, put my handle back on. Careful, careful, careful not to cross thread anything. And you can see now there's really nice movement. And I'm feeling the bottom of the piston down here as it moves up and down. Uh, just snug this one in so that it's hand tightened again. Okay, and I get a lot of nice movement. And you can see here there's so little movement back and forth by those spacers. Those spacers really do the trick. I'm really happy that I discovered those and have been using those. Um, and so the last thing to do is to thread, is to get some Teflon tape and put it on this fitting and Teflon tape and put it on this fitting so that I can tighten this down. There should be, uh, you know, to adjust the throw on this See, I'm probably going to leave this up just a little bit. So it's not going to thread all the way down on these. 
but I think this fitting here should be enough there. He didn't give us a nut uh, because this fitting is so long. So I'm going to try this fitting first. Put three, three wraps of Teflon tape on it. And then um, he gave me a whole roll of Teflon tape. Actually, I'm going to use some blue tape that I have that, that I really like a lot. So I'm going to shut that off, go get my tape, and be back. So I have a high-quality Blue Monster Teflon tape. It has more Teflon per inch than some of the other ones. And I'm not too sure what he sent us, so I'm not going to be using that. Uh, lift this all the way up. Make sure that uh, you don't have it all sticking over the top. Get it started. There's one turn. I'm going to go all the way to the front. Two turns. Three turns. And then just pull and break. Because that will set the Teflon down inside the threads. And so this piece goes on next. And I'm Obviously, again, I'm hand tightening it. And again, it's a 10 millimeter. And I'm going to use this to adjust my piston throw. So I'm assuming that this should go on the top, but I'm not necessarily sure. Maybe the this part should go on the bottom so that I have more. I'm going to do that. I still have more tension on the bottom. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to redo the threads and I'll be right back. So I tightened this down, and one of the reasons why you couldn't use this upside down is because these are two different kinds of threads. And I didn't know that until I started to thread it on, and then I realized it. I've got it tightened down just so that it touches right here and the bottom of the group is um, the bottom of the piston is even with the group. So now I'm going to put Teflon tape onto this fitting and we'll screw it on. So I cut the Teflon tape down so that it's just the size of here. This was too big as you can probably see and the tape he gives you is too big too. You don't want tape hanging down in this section down in here. Um, in fact I may actually cut it off later here. And so if this is correct, remember, we want to just uh, hand tighten. We want to turn this thing so it's facing forward. Clamp. So that I can see it facing forward. It's going to be obviously different than my Bluetooth. Be nice going back to it. The piston throw may, may need to be a little bit lower to push everything out uh, because the group gives you a little bit. Actually, I'm just sticking that back in, but I don't, I don't want to do that yet because I want to put a little bit of grease on there, though I probably don't need to. And I could soak this, but I don't think there's a need and I think all the crap that's in here can just come out by hand. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on here just to keep it nice so that I can pull it out next time. But you probably, I think I could. I'm going to drop that piston throw down just a little bit by loosening this thing one turn. There we go. Hopefully it won't leak. If not, I'll have to pull this back off and re uh, put new Teflon tape on. These things, they have a rounded part on the top. That's what goes up inside the group. Um, you use a very, 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 very small coating on these. A thin coating that goes on here. Pop the screen on. Push the washer in. And now uh, I really need the uh, porta filter. I actually have an old porta filter down here, and I'm pretty sure it'll work. Uh, let's see if I can grab my original one here. And so it's just 
goes up to snug it to tighten it down tighten the gasket so the gasket's fitting nice and tight and I think I'm done yeah voila it's finished fini so nice got a nice throw again oh you can see this little blue Teflon here that's gonna drive me crazy the Teflon tape you can take it off just by using a, a sharp object and pulling the extra tape that you have off and it won't pull off any of the tape up above because that's being secured by the threads so this is just a cosmetic thing but I don't like the way it looks with it hanging down and obviously we didn't have it up here since it fit all the way down and there you go okay so nice looking nice looking deal we'll see how that brass it, how that brass is going to affect me i need to put some new temp strips on the front and uh so i can kind of monitor what's going on and we'll see how the brass insert uh, the brass sleeve works and obviously the new pressure profiling kit thanks for watching